Good morning, everyone. Today is Saturday, the 2nd of March, 2019. And uh, we're going to be reading from Genesis 41, 52, 2nd Corinthians. Uh, Corinthians 1, 3 through 5, 1 Peter 1, 6 and 7, 2 Timothy 4, 17, and 1 Peter 4, 19. Good morning, MJ Abelos. Welcome aboard. Good morning, Louise Dreves. Welcome aboard. Good morning, Azine Selim. Welcome aboard. Guys are up bright and early this morning. God hath caused me to be fruitful in the land of my affliction. Blessed be God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our tribulation, that we may be able to comfort them which are in any trouble. By the comfort wherewith we ourselves are comforted of God, Good morning, Nima G. Mariano and Ling Ling and uh, the rest of you who are jumping on board this morning. For as the sufferings of Christ abound in us, so our consolation also aboundeth by Christ. Now for a season, if need be, ye are in heaviness through manifold temptations, that the trial of your faith being much more precious than of gold that perisheth will be tried with fire and might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. So it's 835 there in the Philippines, MJ. Okay, well it's about 635 here, so you're a couple hours later. Oh, 835 p.m., sure. 835 at night, what am I thinking? Yeah. Let them that suffer according to the will of God commit the keepings of their soul to him in well-doing as unto a faithful creator. Well, all of these scriptures this morning that are taken from the Daily Light compilation of scriptures uh, from the King James Version of the Bible, every one of these have to do with our suffering. Every one of those have to do with the realities that God brings sufferings oftentimes to his people so that we can comfort those other people who are going through the same thing. And that the trial of our faith, we will come forth as gold. No, we, we don't enjoy what we're going through sometimes. Good morning, Matthew, John, Branson. Welcome aboard. But we do realize that we have the Holy Spirit dwelling in us to comfort our hearts. It doesn't really matter what it is we're going through, whether it's something physical, whether it's something financial, whether it's something from a social standpoint with friends and relatives and loved ones, whether it may be something in our jobs, whether it might be, it, do, it doesn't, but what's the most important thing is how do we derive encouragement? How do we derive comfort from what we're going through? You know, the Holy Spirit is our comforter in the midst of whatever it is that, that we are having to face in our lives. I know that there's been times in my life when it, things have happened that seem insurmountable to me. <laughs> they were insurmountable to me as a person. And I've often thought, you know, how am I going to deal with this situation? Well, the po point is, we in ourselves cannot deal with it. We can't. In the flesh, we can't deal with it. But in the Spirit, through the Holy Spirit, God comes alongside us and lifts us up and says, you know, 
Larry, Louise, MJ, Azim, Nina, Ling Ling, MJ, Matthew, and all the rest of you have joined us. I am with you. Underneath you are my everlasting arms. I will sustain you. I will hold you up. Trust in me. That's why I love this scripture in Isaiah 26, 4. Trust ye in the Lord forever. Trust ye in the Lord forever. And the only way we can trust him is if he has put his Holy Spirit in us, if we're one of his children. If we're resting and residing in his love, I've never, um, I've never thought I was worthy of his love. <laughs> because I know my very nature. I know my own depravity. I, own, I know my own wickedness. I know my own proneness to sin in the flesh. But I know how miraculous and mighty and loving he is to lay his life down for me. There's nothing more um, remarkable. But the King of kings and Lord of lords will leave his ivory palaces from above and will lay his life down for the likes of me. I, uh, I've often thought about how we derive our comfort. What is it that most comforts us? The greatest comfort in the whole world is knowing that we're one of his adopted children. And so I have a favor to ask of every one of you this morning. If you would, be so kind is sometime during the day, go to Ephesians 1.11 and 1.6 and just meditate upon those scriptures for me. Because if you do that, I will guarantee you one thing. <laughs> you will get a blessing. Ephesians 1, 5, and 6, and 11. Ephesians 1, 5, 6, and 11. We'll do it together. Ephesians 1, 5. Having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will, in whom we have to the praise of his glory of his grace, wherein he hath made us accepted in the beloved, in whom also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestinated according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will. But my favorite verse is five. My favorite verse is five having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ himself, according to the good pleasure of his will, having predestinated us unto the adoption of children. If you don't have a father, if you don't have a mother, you have an Abba Father who has adopted you and will never unadopt you, will never cast you off. And you cry out, Abba Father, what a solace for God's people. And we cry out, Abba Father, to Him. There's nothing more comforting, regardless of what we're going through. If we in our spirit cry out, Abba, Father. Our adopted 
the Father who's adopted us <laughs> into his heavenly family forever, there's nothing more comforting to me to know that I am one of his children that he's adopted forever. There's, that's the greatest amount of satisfaction that I can get in my, in my heart is to know that I'm one of his. I want to read this before we close out this morning. Welcome aboard, uh, Seshling Jenna. Appreciate you being with us this morning. Um, this is called Satisfied. Satisfied. Satisfaction comes from knowing <clears throat> that within my heart and mind, there's an inner peace of glowing. And in Christ, I can find. A refuge for the soul when life is tough to take. Christ tells us in his word, I will never thee forsake. Oh, the joy and peace it gives me when I rest in what he said. Believing that he is living, having raised up from the dead. Christ, the King of glory, is seated on his royal throne. And he intercedes for me when in my spirit I can only groan. Lord, show mercy to this floundering heart once more, I pray. So at sunrise, noon, or evening, I may in thy presence stay. May your grace so envelop everything I say and do that the world will have no question that I am your child, too. Let the tribulations I go through be a witness of your grace. May my enemies not overtake me. Let their curses be erased. May your power, love, and purpose be demonstrated in my life. May I find satisfaction in the midst of all this strife. And when I draw my last breath and am taken home to be with you, may my passing over be of satisfaction too. I'll be satisfied in knowing, even though it's been a test, that I'm now transcending into your perfect rest. Well, my thoughts and prayers are with you all this morning. Remember me and your prayers as well. And may you have a blessed weekend. And the Lord is my prayer. God bless. Love you all.